Hello everybody and welcome back to uh, PC Tekken Gaming. My name is Kyle and uh, welcome back to our Let's Play on Mad Games Tycoon. This is episode 2 and we're going to continue off from our uh, where we left off last time. We'd only just created the company um, and we called ourselves PTG Studios. Uh, under the player named Septimus, which is my on-screen name. Uh, and we're going to load back into the game. We're just going to pause it for a moment to get our bearing. So in the last episode, we created the, our very first game called Worms on Holiday. We sold 293 copies in the first week. Uh, still got a long way to go there. We still need to make $26,828 to recoup the production costs and hopefully make a profit. But this is the first game, so I'm not sure whether we're going to do that or not. We've got 34000 left in the kitty. <laughs> um, so I guess going forward into this next episode, we're going to try and build out the rest of our garage here. And then uh, once we build out the garage, we'll... Uh, uh, once we unlock some of the other things. So in the last episode, because we created our first game, we unlocked research. So we'll get started by building our research room. And this is where we will build or research new technologies to go into our games. Research consoles, research anything really that will help us be better game developers. So we're going to build the room now. We haven't got a lot of space, so we'll just see. Yep, we'll go for this size. About the same size as our production office. It's going to cost 18000 so that's <laughs> not going to leave us much budget left. We might have to take out a loan. So we'll place the door. Put a desk in there. Might choose a different style. Oh no, what? We'll keep it cheap. We'll go, we'll go the same. Right. So we we'll get our research set up. We can't build any other rooms at this stage. We've got we've got everything we can have. Let's press the play button, see how the sales of the first game goes, and start start what we're going to do next. We'll probably look at some contract work to make a bit of interim money. So these are jobs we can do, which will earn us some money that isn't making a game, but it's doing contract work for some other company. So here we've got a few... Being the fact there's only one of us, we've got to be careful about what we pick, because if we pick something that's too uh, big, we won't be able to complete it in time and we'll get charged a penalty. Uh, so we got 15 weeks to remaining for delivery of this project. We need 264 points. 19 weeks remaining, 222 points. The points regards to how big the workload is. And then we got the salary, uh, 13,000. So, four or six weeks seems a little bit too close. So, I think based on all that, we're going to pick the improving concept. Longest amount of weeks, medium level workload, and decent salary, nearly 14,000. So, we're going to work on that while we sell some games. So this here shows our progress on this uh, contract work. So we've got a new feature we can research for our games. And video game console. So our game seems to be doing fairly well here in its second week of release. So 
So we're still improving the concept from this other company. We seem to be making about 1200 a week in sales. Some random feedback about our game. Uh, we have a five star office quality. Game still fairly well received. So we've completed our project, so now uh, we're going to support the release of our game and launch an update for it. So when you make a game you can launch various updates and add-ons um, to help support the sale of your game through, through continual development support or with an MMO and add-on. So we're going to do a go a game update. Worms on holiday. We're going to go some new levels. For each feature you choose in the patch, it costs you money. So we'll go new levels for this patch. Um, new campaigns, and we'll fix some bugs. Making a four-star patch. It's going to cost us nine hundred twenty-four dollars to make this patch. And with only selecting three things, hopefully we'll be able to make it pretty quickly. So there we go, we're developing a patch for our game, Worms on Holiday. This will keep the audience of our game more interested in it in the longer term, hopefully get us some more sales. The game's got a hype of 4, due to its good release. Which is pretty good, that's the first time I've ever released a game where, oh, This early on at least, where it's had a good reception. So you can see the game sales are dropping now. But after we release our patch, it should pick back up for the next week of sales. There we go. So we're going to release another patch now. I think in this one we'll... F no, we can't fix any more bugs because there are no bugs. So we're going to go for some... Um, what will we go for this time? Some new game modes and maybe some new ob objects. Maybe a security update? No, that's not helping it. Some new sounds. So go for those three things and see how we go. I have this feeling that we're not going to make all our money back from this game. Oh dear. Now, will we release our patch before the game completely tanks? <laughs> this is the next question. Um, just wait to see. And that would be a negative. We didn't... We sold our game for 10 weeks. Barely sold 3,000 copies. Development costs were 29, nearly 30,000. That includes the patches which you release. Um, no marketing costs, no engine costs, no share for developers. Income was only 11,200. So negative profit for worms on holiday. And now we've, we'll cancel our patch. We'll abort our patch. Yep. So we're going to do some more contract work to earn a few bucks to hopefully get us enough money to start another project. I think we will go with the create special effects because we did a workload of 2 to 20 before um, and finished it well ahead of time. So we'll go this one, create special effects.
This is where we might want to look at bringing on somebody to help with our development. So we can hire staff. And it seems here we've got some very fairly basic level staff. So game design is a big thing, so I'm thinking I want to hire somebody with the maximum game design. So Mario here is looking pretty good. Let's just go through the other tabs. Mario is also a fantastic programmer. Uh, he's not that great with graphics, which is a little bit unfortunate. He's great with music and sound. And he's second best with office work. So it looks like Mario here is uh, generally a good person to employ. It's going to cost us $4,000. I think that is potentially a month to pay his wages. He specializes in puzzle and sound. PC speaker sound, which is good for early game. So I think we will hire Mario. And put him into research. And have him research a new feature of four color support. It'll cost us $10,000. I wonder if we can put another office desk in that research office. Because if we can, might be able to get Septimus to jump over and help him. Yes. So we'll put another desk in there. And as soon as Septimus finishes his special effects contract work, we can drop him over here to help with the research project. Because our next aim will be to create a game engine for, we, for which we can use for our games in-house. If we use another company's game engine then we'll have to pay them money and I prefer not to do that. So we're going to go with making our own game engine. And once we make our own game engine we'll, it will also unlock other uh, features. Like other rooms we can go into. There's new research things popping up. Ooh, see, that's a new engine available from another country, another company. Um, new platform available, so it's a new console to launch stuff on. Finishing our workload here fairly easily. Fantastic. So now we're going to move him across. Now we're both going to be researching four color support. Go twice as quick now. So we can't hire no staff, we can't build no more rooms. Uh, so this is the Mad Games convention. This pops up every year and this is if we're developing X amount of games we can promote them at this convention. but. This year we're not, so we're going to go do not participate, but that would be very good to do that in the future. So in the buy new property tab, this is where we will upgrade our building and get a bigger studio later on. Currently we don't need a bigger studio, but uh, eventually we'll be wanting to move with the large garage or the old office building. So, PTG Studios is uh, currently finishing research for four color support, and now we've researched that, we can now develop our own engine. So, I'm going to pop Septimus and Mario across, and we're going to develop a new engine. Uh, so, we're going to call this engine PTG. Uh, well, we're going to have to optimize the engine for a certain genre of game. So we're going to go Arcade. So I'm going to call this PTG Arcadia. 
1.0. We're going to give it the features. These two are all already in there by default. And four color support as well. So the engine is going to cost us 28,000 to make. So we're going to do that. And this is if we sell the engine to another company to make games with. So we're going to set a sale cost at $15,000 and our profit sharing at that 15%. So another company can buy our engine for 15000 and then we can profit share in on their game that they make with it by 15%. So it might help us get a bit of extra passive income into the future. So we're going to create our game now. Or our game engine, sorry. Wonder if there's anything else we can buy for around the office. Some sort of other items, potentially. Just helps the um, overall feel of the office if we've got some of this little stuff. Uh, we might go with a small plant. There we go. So we're working on our PTG Arcadia engine. We'll be able to use this game engine to create our new and upcoming games. Can't research any other features at the moment. We can research another genre. There's lots of research topics, so this is where we get more ideas for our games, so to speak. And that's if we want to research console development and become console developers as well as software developers. But you need an awful lot of money to be doing that. Currently, we can only borrow up to $750,000, so even with borrowing money, I don't think we're going to be budding uh, young software, I mean, uh, console developers anytime soon. Just might speed up the time a bit now to get our game engine developed a little bit quicker. the lure lot but I guess you do need to do that every now and again okay so go back to normal speed now we'll do a bit of contract work we'll go this one for the biggest amount of money because now we need some money to make our next game now I don't I know we didn't make any money on the last game but uh, I tend to find you can go ahead and make games and have a hit and a miss and a hit and a miss and eventually you'll break through with your number one release title that'll make you more game more money than the first six games you release before it like real world game developers they have some hits and they have some misses So we've got paid some money. See if we can pick up what some more contract work here. Yep, we'll go the create graphics with Activision. We'll speed it up again.
Cool, we got some money because Remedia has licensed our engine we just made. Fantastic. Now we'll just grab a new topic to make a game out of. So we're going to go with... Mecha seems to be quite popular right now up here, so... We'll research Mecha, shall we? Yep, there it is. It's costing us $10,000 to research the topic of Mecha. We have a 1% reputation. Probably from the our first game. That wasn't really a success, but it reviewed very well. So, researching Mecha. Speed it up again. And then we'll go back over here. And we'll develop a new game now. Hopefully we have enough money in the bank to be able to do that. So, we're going to go with Mecha. And a subtopic of colonization sounds interesting. Our genre is going to be arcade. It's a popular genre at the moment. Plus, we've just made a game engine based around uh, arcade. So, we're going to choose our proprietary PTG Arcadia 1.0 game engine. It's costing us 15,000 to use it, so already hitting above the money we have at the bank, so we may need to take out a loan to create this game. I think the target audience for, audience for this will be adult, because mecha colonization is sounding very much like an adult game, and we're going to call this game... Uh, what should we call this game? How about Titans Arrive? Perfect. Titans being mechas. Arriving being colonization of something. We can still only do retail, we can still only do B genre games, so we'll continue. We're gonna go for personal computer. We're gonna continue. We're gonna here it's giving us some good pointers about what is best to specialize our game in. You don't always get these, but when you do, they're very good to follow them. So we're going to go for maximum gain length and maximum graphics. Uh, it's an adult game, so we're going to go a little bit more for game depth than beginner friendly, but not too much. We're going to go a little bit more for core gamer. Um, and because it's a mech game and a colonization game, we'll go a little bit more for function, probably. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, our game development costs are again rising to 43,000. <laughs> um, and we're going to prioritize... Graphics again. Let's see if we can go all. No, it's too, too expensive to do all. But maybe we can do a couple more. Maybe Japan. And Chinese. Just giving our game a bit more of a chance to sell when it's released. 
so this is our game engine. So we're upgrading from a text-based game to four color support and our PC speaker sound. This is where we'll go to the bank and get some more money to develop our game. We need 53,000 to make it, plus some excess over that. So we will borrow, I think we'll borrow 50,000. Brings us to 80,000, 81,000. 53 to develop the game and a little bit left over. Okay, let's go. Production has started on Titans Arrive. Hopefully our trending and not trending stays the same by the time we get this game released. While a game is being developed as well, you can click on the project and look at the development report. And it gives you a bit of a cool overview of how the game is coming along. As we get more progress into the late game, this little current screenshot image here gets better and better depending on what game engine you're using and what features you have. And these are all the improvements which you can do as well later on. This is also where we can do other stuff with the project um, as we get different offices. So. We will continue development of the game. A new research genre is available. About 45% uh, of our development is done now, so we're about nearly halfway there, Oops, 60%. Two thirds of the way there now, 80%. It's looking pretty good so far. We have one more look at our development report, see it looks the same. And our game is ready to go. So let's look at launching the game. So all our test copies have been sent out. This is our results. So gameplay, graphics, sound, and technology used. Find a publisher. So I think we'll go with T2 again because we have good market relationship now and they're still an arcade based releaser. Yep, so we're gonna go with T2 again, our trusted partner. Some more experience gained. No games out matching our genre or combination, so we're unique once again. We released our second game. You can now buy dev kits to develop games for other platforms. Fantastic, so we can release more games than just on the PC. Um, now we can develop games for multiple platforms. Fantastic. More stuff to help us sell more games. So let's see how we did this time. Ooh, fantastic. So the graphics are great. They're the best I've seen in some time. The sound is below average. Hopefully they will do better next time. The controls are just a little bit too complicated. However, the game is playable. The gameplay is below average, they need to be much better. This game has many weaknesses, only buy if you're a hardcore fan. Well, that's pretty generalized text that uh, comes across in most of uh, these screens. But, keynotes here, graphics are great. We're a topic in trend. Mecha and arcade, and we're a genre in trend. 48% score, that's pretty astounding, better than our last release. So, by all accounts, we might actually make some money out of this game. But, 
we're going to leave it there and we're going to wait till the next episode to see how our second game does. Titans arrive. Um, so uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're liking this series so far, please, uh, you know, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Uh, if you're liking the series, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next episode when uh, Titans arrive on the shelves. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you then.